Hello and welcome. Today we will be making sponge candy, also called honeycomb candy. This is a super simple candy recipe that you can make with only a couple of ingredients and tools. As always though, I would like to thank the people who are subscribing and have shared the videos. It really helps the channel grow and it means the world to me. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do for more videos like this. And you may want to hit the notification bell because Google is really, really bad about letting people know about new videos. Now for our ingredients, we will need one half of a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of corn syrup, one tablespoon of honey, two tablespoons of water, and one teaspoon of baking soda. Baking powder will not work here. Also, if you'd like to, you can coat them with some chocolate, and then you would need some chocolate or candy melts. Now, before we do anything else, you want to make sure you have a parchment lined heat proof dish and your teaspoon of baking soda pre-measured and ready to go. Okay, we will want to start by mixing our sugar, water, honey, and corn syrup together in a small pan over medium heat. Once everything is fully mixed, we don't want to stir it or agitate it at all afterwards. It will look very cloudy and hazy, but as it cooks it will become more and more clear up until the point where it starts to hit a rolling boil. I actually re replaced my old recipe for this with Chef John from Food Wishes version. The older recipe and more traditional one only uses corn syrup sugar and water. Switching out the one table of corn syrup for honey adds a nice extra layer of flavor and makes it fit its alternate name of honeycomb candy much better. Now jumping forward to our rolling boil it will look like this but we need it to actually get all the way up to 300 degrees if not going a touch higher. What we are looking for is the hard crack stage in sugar melting. Sugar is kind of neat in that it will depend on the temperature you bring it up to how it will re-solidify and the crystalline structure will be made. And this is a couple different stages. We will get more into that as we make more candies. For now, all we need to know is that between 300 and 310 degrees is the temperature range we are looking for, the hard crack stage. Some people say you can tell by the color of the mixture, if it's done or not, but I think that would require a lot of experience and having made this and a lot of other candies a lot. I used both a candy thermometer and a probe thermometer just to make sure I wasn't off too far either up or down and I would not recommend doing this recipe without a thermometer. Once it does hit 300, we are at the magic number and we are ready to go. I do want to point out, you need to be very careful when you're making this final mixture. If this gets on you, it will harden on your skin and it will be incredibly hard to remove and you will suffer severe burns. So be extremely careful when you're mixing this hot molten sugar. Now we get to the fun part and also the most dangerous part. We want to pour the baking soda to as spread out as possible. You want to get it as thin a layer as possible so that when you start mixing it, it's going to go much easier and much faster. Now, as you can see here, when you start to stir in the baking soda, its reaction is going to go from zero to 100 in about a half a second. So you want to be prepared for that. We want to get this mix stirred as fast as possible, and that's to make sure we don't lose too much of the air bubbles that it's making. The bubbles are what transforms this from a hard candy-like texture and lets us make it into a light airy texture. Now, once we have it all mixed in, we just need to pour it into our lined sheet pan and let it cool for about 30 minutes. After that has fully cooled all the way, you can take it and tap it on the countertop or tap it with your knuckles or a butter knife and that will break it. You can see the bubbly part here and that's why I got the name honeycomb because of all the little air pockets being kind of like an actual honeycomb, although not really the same shape, but hey. When you're breaking it, you don't want to grip on it too hard if it's very, very puffed, puffy and airy because it'll start to crumble in your hands. It is hard on the outside, so you will generally have to use something like your knuckles or the back of a knife or something to break it up into small pieces. Once you've broken it up, you have made the candy. Now, you might, like myself, ask, why is baking powder bad here? And while I don't know the reason, I can show you what it does. Now, looking at the reaction after being stirred into our molten lava sugar mixture, you can see the reaction is decidedly less rapid and decidedly less impressive. I would guess this is because the material used to encapsulate the baking soda taking, takes up too much volume and reduces the actual amount of baking soda by quite a bit more than you'd imagine. Alright, so the reaction was small, but there was a reaction. So let's see how it looks when we break it open after cooling. And looking at this, we can see that there's just enough bubbles to make it hazy and slightly more breakable than plain sugar, and it sort of has the consistency of peanut brittle with all the fun removed. Eh, do not recommend. 
All right, now that mine is fully cooled and broken, I took some chocolate and melted in the microwave. Now, this is really easy to do. You just put it in there for about 30 seconds at a time until it's full, fully melted. Mine took one minute. I took the melted chocolate and did both the traditional presentation of the partially covered large pieces and the less used complete coating of the smaller pieces. I let that cool in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes and the chocolate's gonna end up being fully hardened by that time. I'm just gonna use a paper plate here, but a cell pad, parchment paper, or wax paper, you could do them on any of those, just so it doesn't have something to really stick to as it hardens up. Once you have as much coated as you want to get coated, and you're done, and you have yourself some nice looking and tasty candy. Oh, I also found that a, if you want the better picture for your candy, you're gonna to wanna to go with the partially covered large pieces, as for photo-wise, they really do have the best appearance. Though the smaller, fully coated pieces actually end up being a little bit better in flavor. All right, and with that, our candy is actually finally made and ready to serve. Now for the dishes, you'll probably, you're looking at me going, hey, uh, I have some dishes that are now coated in solid sugar. Hey, what about that? Uh, so to get that off, and it's actually not as hard as you imagine, just add some water in the pan and bring it back up to a boil. Once it heats up, everything in the water will just start melting. And for the outside parts, you can use your heat, heat proof spatula to essentially take some of the water and wipe it on the areas that are not covered in water. And that'll soften it up and then you can just kind of scrape it off really easily. It's actually a much easier cleaning job than you might imagine. So with that, we are done and I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, do so and come back for more and I would like to thank you all for watching and hope you have a great day and a great meal.